after the capacitor in this basic RC circuit is charged, the switch goes from A to B. What happens when the switch goes from A to B? When the switch goes to B, the capacitor begins to discharge through this loop. Because Q equals to CV, when there's a charge on the capacitor, there is a potential difference between the two plates of the capacitor. When there's a potential difference provided to a resistor, a current begins to flow, which in this case discharges the capacitor. During discharging, the charges on the plates would change according to time. The discharging current would also change according to time. In order to find the Q and the I as functions of time, we have to write a differential equation to solve. For circuits, we would start with the loop rule. Please see if you can write that differential equation. In textbooks, it usually goes like this. Back when we switched to A to charge this capacitor, we wrote this differential equation. By switching from A to B, we remove the battery and replace it with an ideal wire. Therefore, we can just remove the E in this differential equation. So, just this part. This method works fine, but if we do not start with this previous differential equation, if we only start with a charged capacitor and we connect it to a resistor to discharge it, it can be a bit tricky to come up with this differential equation. So this is what I usually do. Since the top plate is positively charged and the lower one negatively charged, the discharging current would flow counterclockwise. So if I start from here and go clockwise to write my loop rule, when I go from here to there, I'm going against the current, so the potential should increase by I times R. And then I'm going from positive to the negative plate. The potential should go down by whatever voltage we have across the capacitor. Now I'm back to the starting point, so this delta V should equal to zero. And then we can replace I with the dQ dt. And the voltage across the capacitor will be Q over C. However, during discharging, Q is decreasing. So dQ dt is negative. But we know for sure that this is the correct direction for discharging current. So the current has to be positive. So we have to add a negative sign here to make our current positive. Of course, this gives us the, the same differential equation. So to write the differential equation during discharging, we either have to use the charging current direction for I, and I equals to dQ dt, or to use the correct discharging current direction for I, and I equals to negative dQ dt. When we use the charging current direction, since it is not the correct direction for discharging current, this current should be negative, so it equals to dQ dt, a negative quantity. When we use the correct discharging current direction, the current is positive. Therefore, I equals to negative dQ dt, so that the correct direction current can be positive. To find Q and I as functions of time, we can solve this differential equation to find Q, and then find negative dQ dt for the current. We will work on solving this differential equation in another lesson. Right now, we will again guess the answer by by plotting charge as a function of time graph and the current as a function of time graph. Please see if you can plot these graphs and use them to guess Q and I as functions of time. Just like during charging, the solutions will either have an exponential decay or a 1 minus exponential decay format. Initially, there is a charge on the capacitor. Then the capacitor gets fully discharged, so there is no more charge on the capacitor. Same for the current. Initially, there is a discharging current. 
a long time later, there is no more charge on the capacitor and no more discharging current. So both are exponential decay. So the Q as a function of time would have a format that's e to the negative t over rc. Same here, e to the negative t over rc. And what do you think goes here? It's the initial charge. And for this one, that's the initial discharging current. Again, the rc is the time constant of the rc circuit. The larger the r times c, the longer it takes to discharge the capacitor. Sometimes a problem may ask you about the voltage across the capacitor instead of the charge on the capacitor. In that case, all we have to do is to say V equals to Q over C. We just have to divide this equation by C on both sides, and we would still have an exponential decay. Or we may be asked about the voltage across the resistor instead of the current through the resistor. In that case, all we have to do is to say V equals to IR. We can multiply this equation by R on both sides, and we would still get an exponential decay. And if we have a combination of capacitors here, or a combination of resistors there, all we have to do is to use the R equivalent and the C equivalent for the RC.